What's up, everybody? My name is Jeffrey Way, and welcome back to NetHuts Plus. In today's quick tip, we're going to be taking a look at a very simple makeshift solution for templating in JavaScript. So for more in-depth production quality templating, I highly recommend you take a look at jQuery templating, which works quite well. I use it often myself. But sometimes you're working on maybe a demo or a small project, and you really only need a rather simple templating system. So we'll build something from scratch today. We'll be working in JS Bin today. And before we begin, let's take a look at some of the issues. So you've probably seen this before. Maybe the user creates a variable called HTML and they will make that equal to HTML snippet. And then maybe they will add on to that like so. And then they'll add on more to that. Maybe they'll create an unordered list or something like that. And then ultimately they will inject that into the DOM, maybe something like this, enter HTML equals HTML, and then we get the product right here. But this is really sloppy. You don't wanna be mixing your JavaScript and your HTML like this if you don't have to. So in these sorts of situations, consider, would it be better to use a simple templating solution? All right, let's build something. Right here, I wanna have a very simple way to maybe display a NetTouch title and an image, just something to work with that will represent an AJAX request. So right here, we will create it. First, I'm gonna create a place where the data will be inserted. So I'm going to fetch this data and I'm going to insert it into this div. Next, we need our template and we're gonna place that within a script so that it doesn't show up on the page. And maybe we'll give a type equals something we've made up, template, or you can do your initials, just something to make it unique. Next, I'm gonna give it an ID and we will call that maybe template as well. Okay, so within here, and I'm gonna remove this JavaScript, we will create our template. So I'm gonna have an H2, and we can specify how we want to specify our template items. And in this case, I'm gonna use two curly braces. This is fairly common and standard. And I'm just gonna give it a name here. So I would like the title to be inserted here. Next, we want an image, and I will simply grab images from here. So we'll just create an image tag like so. And the alt text will be the title of the post, so I will repeat that. And the source, we'll call that img source. And lastly, we should have a link to it. So within the h2 tag, I'll split this off, and we will add an anchor, like so. And this time the href will be, we'll call it href. And that should do it for this simple example. We have a simple template. So now we need to attach this template to our data and then insert that into the DOM. And the first step is let's keep from using lots of global variables. You've probably seen this many times. It's called self-invoking anonymous function. Now, if you're curious about this semicolon, this has sort of become a standard practice these days. And it's simply a way to ensure that if your script is being concatenated with another, it's not going to break. So maybe if somebody else has something like this, alert high, and that gets concatenated with your script, note here that they left off the semicolon. So then you'll have their script and then your script and an error is going to be thrown because there's a missing semicolon. So what we're doing here is we're just making sure in the event that this script is combined with another, we're gonna make sure that there's no error thrown. Next step is we need to have some data and we're not gonna perform an AJAX request here, we're going to simulate it. So I'll create a variable called data and we'll specify here, simulates AJAX request. And this will be equal to an array of objects essentially, but it can take any form you want really, it just depends on how you're retrieving it. And each object will contain a title. And in this case, I'm just gonna grab it from NetTouch. So don't worry, we're gonna do the first one together and then I will do the rest of them on my own so that you don't have to watch. The ref is going to be a link to the post. So I will copy that and paste it in. And then the final step is the image source. And I will capture that one as well. There we go, so there's our first one. We have an array, and the first item in this array is an object where note that we have title, href, and image source, and those will correspond to title, image source, and href. So next, I'm going to add a couple more just so we can have something to populate. So I will pause and add the rest myself. There we are, I've added two more objects containing two other posts. So there's our data. Next, I'd like to store a reference to where our template is and where our result div is. So I will place that right here after. And we'll call it template. And here, just to be lazy, I'm gonna use query selector rather than get element by ID. Query selector allows you to pass a CSS selector to query the DOM, similar to what you might be used to in a JavaScript library. Here, we're going to search the DOM for the element with an ID of template. Next, we're going to have our result div. 
And once again, query selector, and we're going to look for the element with a class of result. Finally, the last step is to filter through all of these objects within the array and attach the template to them and inject them into the DOM. So to do that, we're going to use a for statement. So we'll create two more variables, for i equals zero, and I also want the length. And the length will be data.length. And that will be equal to the number of items we have. And in this case, that would be three. And let's get started. For i is less than length i plus plus. Now that we're filtering through it, we need to figure out a way, how can we take this template and take the data here and insert it into the template? And we can just use a little bit of regular expressions. So we have a reference to the template, but what we want here is not the template node, we want the contents of it. So we really want inner HTML, and that will be equal to this snippet right here. So now I'm going to say template.replace, and we're going to look for, in this case, every occurrence of title, and we're going to replace that with whatever the title value is within our object. It's pretty simple, right? So let's get started. We're gonna look for title, and we're going to replace that with, and we can access the current item in our for statement by doing the data array, then we're going to use i, and in this case, that will be data, get the first item. So now we've selected the object, and now I wanna grab title. So I'll do data i title. Now we've made this replacement, but we haven't stored it in a variable. It's not doing anything just yet, but that's okay. Now we're going to do it two more times, and one will be for the href, and that will bring in data i href, and the final one will be image source. So hopefully that makes sense. We grab this template and we search through it and every occurrence of curly brace, curly brace, href, close curly brace, close curly brace will be replaced with its respective data value. Now that we've made this replacement, we can either store it in a variable or in this case, we're going to grab the result div and we saved that within this variable called result. And I'll say result.innerHTML plus equals, we're going to add onto that. And now if I bring this over, We've successfully attached our data to a template and displayed it on the page. And this is a much cleaner way to do it. Notice that we don't have tons of HTML sitting around in our JavaScript that can be really confusing, especially on a team. We're simply using a makeshift templating solution doing a little bit of search and replace. Okay, that will do it for today's tutorial. And again, if you require a more all-encompassing solution, definitely take a look at jQuery templating because it works quite well. For more tips and tutorials, Always pay attention to NetTouch Plus. My name is Jeffrey Way, and I'll see you next time.